Hello and welcome to Metric Insights. In version 5.0, we introduced datasets, which represents a major system transformation aimed at enhancing security, data processing, and publishing elements in an easier and quicker way. To learn more about datasets basics, follow the link to a playlist or to the help documentation in the info box. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to add derived fields to the dataset results. But first off, what is a derived field? Derived fields display values that do not exist in the original data source. These fields show values that are calculated via mathematical formulas, called expressions, and applied to one or more numeric fields from the data source. Therefore, these fields are specific to a dataset view and must be saved before they are used, but they can be edited or deleted anytime. Let's create such a field right now. And first, let's do it in a single instance mode. I move to the Select Fields section, and below all the listed fields there is an Add Derived Field button. It sends me to a pop-up where I can construct the formula for calculating the derived values. But first, let's give this field a name. It should be descriptive and unambiguous, so that anyone can easily understand what kind of calculations have been performed for getting the final result. Let's assume that our company's net profit is calculated as 30% of our total sales. So let's call the field that way, net profit. And now let's convert 30% into a real number by constructing a formula. This is sales multiplied by 0.3. By the way, to add a numeric field to a formula, you simply open a square bracket and the system displays all numeric fields in a dataset. Click Add Field, and then make sure to apply changes, otherwise you won't see a new field in the results set. Now look, here's the net profit field in the results set, just as we expected. Now we can add this field to filters, the same way we would add any field from the original data source. You can create a rule or a group of rules depending on the complexity of conditions. A new field has been automatically added to the drop-down list, and since it's a numeric field, you can choose among the conditions matching numeric fields exclusively. Again, apply changes to refresh the results set. Let's save it as a separate view now, since derived fields are assigned to our particular view. If we update this page without first saving changes per an existing view, or creating a new view and assigning field there, this field is going to disappear. Now let's see how it works in the last two instances mode. First off, we choose the days we want to compare, for example, Friday and Thursday, and now we switch to the last two instances mode. We can use the same derived field, which is net profit, in this mode too, but now we can create a filter condition where we compare current net profit with prior net profit per respective compared days. This mode allows comparing certain values or constructing really complex filter queries by choosing values from the drop-down lists. To learn more about comparing instances mode, watch the video Tracking Changes in Snapshot Datasets. Furthermore, in this mode we can also use current and prior values by creating derived fields with more complex formulas. The procedure is very similar. We click Add Derived Field. Let's assume that we want to calculate the difference of units sold in percents. Again, to see the variables I can work with, I open a square bracket and I see that the number of available variables doubled, and it's because I can open both current and prior values in the formula. So, to display the percent difference of units sold on Friday from number of units sold on Thursday, I will use this formula. First, divide current units by prior units. Then multiply the quotient by 100 and subtract 100 to normalize. Again, add field and apply changes. This new field has been added to a results set just as we have expected. There are two warnings though. The formula in the field already compares current and prior values, so if we intend to use this field as a part of a filter condition, there won't be current and prior options. Only one option is going to be automatically added to the filter drop-down list. And secondly, filters that use current and prior variables in a formula are not applicable for the single instance mode. Regardless of whether a derived field has been built for a single instance or for comparing instances, you can use it for building new elements within literally seconds. They are especially helpful for building metrics, 
just go to Actions, Build Metric. In this case, date column can be either a date time field from the data source, if any, or the snapshot dates, and value column may be a derived field. Once the metric is ready, you can add alert rules, bursts, or add it to favorites if you want to monitor the changes of the values in the derived field. These are the available options for adding derived fields to datasets and using them for filtering data or for creating metrics and reports. To view video courses on snapshotting, creating alerts and bursts, or more information about metrics, see the links in the info box. If you have any further questions, you may leave them in the comments section below or contact our support team at support at metricinsights.com.